In this Elder Scrolls Online video, we're going to dive into one of many changes added to the game over its 5-year lifespan, and that is minor and major buffs. Some time ago, most effects on skills, sets, poisons, and potions were transformed into standardized buffs that had minor and major versions. This was done to help balance the game and prevent people from stacking things like healing received to the moon, making them nearly immortal. I want to talk about why this may have not been the best change for the game and what can be done about it moving forward. At first glance, the minor and major buff change seemed like a plausible solution to handling some of Esso's never-ending balancing issues, but it had some unforeseen consequences. Zenimax had to jam nearly every effect in the game under the banner of one of the minor and major buffs or debuffs, and it wasn't pretty at first. And while it's much better now, they took over 1,000 effects and placed them into roughly 40 or so categories. Let's take a look at just what these are before we get into why this isn't good for the game. Buffs and debuffs in Elder Scrolls Online fall into minor and major categories with the latter being a more powerful version of the minor. Minor and major buffs of the same name stack, but you cannot stack two minor or two major buffs of the same name. This means you can only have one source of minor prophecy and one of major prophecy, and any additional sources do not provide any benefit. The following is a list of all buffs and debuffs in Elder Scrolls Online, just to give you an idea of what they are along with what skills and sets provide them. You can see from looking over the list that there are many, many ways to get each buff and debuff, and this list is growing with each major update, and therein lies the problem. What we are seeing now is more and more sets and skills that provide the same benefits that we can already achieve, making a stagnation of build variety. When the only difference in builds is which set you use to get the same buff, then all you're left with are proc sets to make up the bulk of your variety. The Elder Scrolls Online community has stated time and time again that they are not a fan of these types of sets because they are randomized and do not involve player skill. And PvE players are especially not a fan as they can no longer critically strike since the Homestead update. Many PvE builds have high critical strike chance, making this wasted on these type of sets. While I do not claim to be an expert on game balance, and any game that has both PvE and PvP tied together must be particularly difficult, this change has drastically shaped the future of SO. Each new update simply features new sets with the same buffs and debuffs we've come to know and use, making them utterly uninteresting. Or it has proc sets that are getting more and more bizarre, as the Zenimax think tank has begun to run out of ideas. I've stated time and time again that the sets of Elder Scrolls Online are what makes the game so unique and fun, among other things, but this change is severely limiting them. The solution for this problem is to remove minor and major buffs and return to a state where each buff stacks with any other, but that is far easier said than done at this point. I don't think Zenimax will likely do that because of the sheer time and manpower it would take to test out all possible combinations and make sure nothing is straight up broken. And even though it is probably the best long-term solution, there is another option. What Zenimax could do, in my humble opinion, is add many more types of minor and major buffs, allowing for more creativity and freedom while still maintaining that sense of standardization and balancing. Right now, there are something like 40 unique buffs and debuffs that have minor and major versions totaling around 80 buffs and debuffs. If this number was expanded by even 50% to a total of 120, things would be much more interesting and players would have much more freedom. Some of these could include the following. If that doesn't work, there is always the option to slowly introduce new sets and skills that don't have minor and major buffs so they can start moving in the direction of more freedom. This would allow them to balance things a little at a time versus the current meta, and would also make new sets much more appealing as they aren't the same old same old. I think this one change alone, shaking up these debuffs and buffs, would allow so much creativity and freedom that I mentioned this specifically to Zenimax at E3 just last week. I really hope they take this feedback to heart and make some good changes here, allowing players to really play the way they want and come up with some insane builds. Stay tuned for more SO content throughout June and July as we bring you more builds and class guides.